wrapped in there. And I don't know if... if Forgotten prophecies. I outlined four, five, six, and I, I won't do all that now, but I outlined four, five, six prophetic uh, proclamations in the Scripture that we rarely hear any preaching, teaching from. We rarely talk about it as Christians, you know, in, in our churches and in our Sunday school classes. But, but they are central to what is happening in the world right now. Yeah. For example, I'll give a couple of examples. For example, in the Old Testament, Psalm 82, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, Backed up in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 24, Revelation chapter 20, um, and, and, and several other places, there are prophecies that God utters first and says that in the last days that God will destroy, will kill, if you will, that they will experience death, that there is, a, there, there is a part of the angelic realm and Satan himself that will utterly be destroyed. They will die like mere men. Isaiah 14, God says, I will bring you down to the grave, to the pit. Like He says that to Satan. Ezekiel 28, he says, I will reduce you to ashes. You will be no more. A lot of people, I mean, God is prophesying. He says, I'm going to destroy you. You get to Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, and it says, Satan, woe unto you, earth, because Satan has gone down to you, and he is filled with rage. Why? He knows his time is short. Yeah. He knows his time is short. And then we hear Jesus speak about death and hell and the angels and Satan and all of that was created for them. And then we hear in Revelation talking about the great white throne and death and hell are brought up before the great white throne. Judgment is pronounced. To the lake of fire you go. And what does the scripture say? And this is the second death. It's done. Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. His demons are thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Death, complete separation from God. It's over. Ezekiel 28, you are done. You are reduced to ashes. Your time is over. I don't know about y'all, but I can't wait to the day when yeah. King Jesus is on the throne. So, so that's the thing. That's the thing. So as we talk about, as we talk about, Pastor Jim, what's happening in the world before us in the deeper state and in in saboteurs and in, in gods and thrones, it's all about exposing to the world and waking the church up. Here's what's really, really happening. God said it thousands of years ago. We're not making this stuff up. The headlines are declaring it. Yes. That the government, the deep halls of the government are talking about it. WikiLeaks has been exposed. We know what they're thinking. We know what the demonic plans are. But God's word has told us this. Thousands of years ago, we're now living in that generation. Here we are in the midst of it. These are very spiritual times, very demonic times, very dark times. However, the end of the story is Satan and his demonic horde and all of this evil, dark, despicable, nasty stuff that has been shoved upon humankind for thousands of years, it will go down to the pit, it will be reduced to ashes, it will be destroyed, and it will be no more, and Satan will finally be the god of nothing. Right. Nothing. <laughs> I love it. If, if I weren't a Christian, I sure want to be one. Yeah, well, thank and you. What's thank going you. on would show me that God is real. Yeah. The Bible, you know, why I get so excited is, you know, I had the, the years in prison to study and study and study, and it's all coming to pass now. Yes, yes. Yes. It's amazing what God is doing. Uh, Colonel, I want to ask you a question. We, we got into the swamp a little bit. Can the swamp be drained? Do you think, is it physically possible or is this such a demon-possessed swamp that the swamp can't be drained? What, what do you think? Well, I write in the chapter that I did for Tom's book that, yes, it can be, but we have to be willing to basically cut it off at its knees, get rid of half of the people there, uh, disperse it throughout the United is States. Is the president not willing to, to really get rid of the people inside the White House well, even that are 
against well, somebody's the people, against him in the White House, well, right? Well, clearly, and and you know there are a lot of leaks, and I suspect yeah. that those are the embeds that you know transition from being political appointees to being uh, general service people, you know, government servants. Uh, there's a lot of that, uh, but you basically to drain the swamp. You know, Washington used to be part of it, a swamp. And so we had to bring in dirt, and we had to fill in places, and uh, we had to do a host of things, yeah. get rid of all those swamp critters. Mm -hmm. The only way to get rid of the swamp critters is you, you have to take them away. You have to get rid of them. Now, what you do is, like I said, you disperse them across the United States. Why in the world do we need the FBI in Washington, D.C., at least all of them? I have neighbors that are in the FBI. Why do we need the, the Central Intelligence Agency in Washington, D.C.? That's where it's focused. Why do we need DHS there? Why do we need, we don't need the entire Pentagon, 23,000 of us that are in that big building. <laughs> you know, we could disperse the 2.6 million uh, people in that organization, much like we do the military, which is 2.4 million all over the world. Um, we don't need that many either, oh, by the way. Uh, I see you know, all sorts of ridiculous waste all the time. And, you know, the GAO and others, I used to be an inspector general, and we used to go out and look at things and say, this is wrong, this is bad, how we've wasted billions here and so forth. We need accountability. Now, it's tough for a president. Ronald Reagan went in with the intent of closing down the swamp. Uh, he did some things on the margin, but the swamp is incredibly powerful. You've got people like uh, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan who, you know, believe it or not, went to the Bilderbergers, which is a secret society, back in 2016. And as the late Phyllis Schlafly wrote, she said, look, the purpose of the Bilderbergers' secret meeting in Georgia back in 2016 was to defeat Trump. That was the purpose of that meeting. And so you had the majority leader and the Speaker of the House at that very meeting. Now, I don't know what was said because it's, uh, you know, you're not supposed to talk outside of that particular meeting. But you have all sorts of secret types of Mm -hmm. organizations mm -hmm. and plans. And I call that a cultic. You know, they're, they're making little, little plans, and frankly, it's illegal. It's against the federal law to make policy in secret, you know, where it's supposed to be in, in open forums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that I outline in that chapter that we can fix a lot of this, but it's going to take a tough, tough guy. And I think Mr. Trump can do it, but he needs people he can rely upon. And then you have to go in there with a very sharp knife and start pushing things out of the way and getting rid of the excess. And we've got a lot of excess. Why are the Republicans fighting the president? Well, they don't support him. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Again? They don't support him. It, it's just shocking to me. And yeah. I, I mean, I can Well, what's the going names. on? Can name the well, names. Do we not have a Republican and Democratic Party anymore? Is it well, we do, but they have their own loyalties and their own constituents. All the divisions within the party. Though. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the unfortunate reality. He came in with people that, you know, were loyal to him that just were not mainline Republicans. And it, as a direct result, you end up with, you know, a lot of infighting. You have a lot of rhinos there that uh, have their own agenda that has nothing to do with what the interests and the program of the president happens to be. Tom, you, you, you write in your book that you've never seen such division in America, in politics. Right. Just what we're talking about here. Right. This is something that people, we really don't get it. We, we old people especially, we understand America. We understand we've had Democrats. We had Truman. He swore a lot, but, you know, I happen to like Truman. I don't know why. I, I, I mainly because he got uh, Israel. Israel to become yes. a state. But, yes. but you know, uh, he's, he's mild compared to what's, what's some of the anti-stuff's going on right now. Mm. Yeah. You look at Obama. He goes across town. He opens up an office. He's working with his, what's it called, Organizing for Action, OFA, whatever it is. They have 250 offices in the United States. They're agitators. They work with George Soros, groups like that. Uh, what's They're working the, under the former president? Oh, yeah. Well, and furthermore, I mean, it, go back and watch Obama's last official speech when he, that he made as president. And what's he saying? I am heartened. This is what he's saying. I'm heartened by those of you out there that have stood up to resist Trump's first, you know, act in trying to uh, get support for building a wall to stop illegal immigration. He is sending a clear message to his street agitators. He has, he's gone back wow. to 
his roots as yes. a Saul Alinsky yes. uh, radical. But again, what's the spirit behind it? What what? Who does Saul Alinsky dedicate his book "Rules mm-hmm. for Radicals" mm-hmm. to? Mm-hmm. Lucifer. Al- yes. Right. As yeah. the first, so there is a yeah. spirit they recognize that is behind this. So it's a, it's it's gods and thrones. It is a clash of world views, right? But they are being successful now. And when you see the the division that's happening on the street, uh, it's almost like their own, uh, like their time has arrived. Another uh, tenet of occultism is called ordo ad chaos. The idea that is called uh, order out of chaos. The idea that you create chaos so that you then cause the world to turn to your ideas for an answer, to turn to you as an answer, right? right? So they are right now intentionally doing what the book Rules for Radicals discusses. It it actually lays down the rules, how you go out, you create a sense of desperation among the population. You get people freaking out and afraid of stuff that isn't even really there or even happening. You just make them think it is, right? And then they will turn to you. It's order out of chaos. So this is exactly what's happening. We are intentionally trying to divide the nation. And so we're using things like race war and all that, right? And now it's bleeding over into sports. Mm. People are, you know, people are sick of it. They don't even want to watch the NFL anymore because people are using the NFL game the as an opportunity. Are going yeah, they're, down. they're ra- well, that's right. People love football in America, and the ratings are going down instead of up. Right, because they want to watch a game. They don't want to hear you, you know, literally protesting Those America. Those football players that make hundreds of millions, millions of, dollars. of dollars, right? You know, get your violins out and you feel so sorry yeah. for them. You know, why can't they play football? Yes, just watch a good game. You know, everybody's, yeah. you, you know, the, the California has just voted to become a sanctuary right. state. Uh. Now, L- Lieutenant Colonel, maybe you could explain how can a state vote to disobey basically the uh, the basic federal laws. You know, there is a movement in California, Pastor, as you may well know, to, you know, leave the union. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that will probably gain uh, momentum in the wake of that particular decision uh, to, yes, they want to make themselves a, a side. You know, that, that throws out the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution that says what doesn't belong to the federal government, but certainly belongs to the states. And so what we've found is that these radicals, uh, certainly on the left coast, have taken over everything from San Diego all the way up into Northern California. Uh, you know, maybe the San Andreas Fault's going to, you know, rumble and it's all going to fall into the sea. They certainly have you know, some, some very, very serious issues. And, I, and I'm afraid that, you know, that's going to be fanned by the likes of George Soros' money. It's going to be, you know, get Antifa. We've seen it Berkeley lately. Uh, we've seen, you know, the, the whole idea that we're, you know, nation states that are sovereign are going to be wiped away because that's what the globalists are all about. They don't want us to have nation states. They want one world governance under their elite control. And these people think they're genetically predisposed to be smarter than the rest of us, and therefore they can they can reimpose a feudalistic system which dictates everything that we consume and do. You know, they are you know worshiping themselves. You know, George Soros says, I think I'm a god. He says this in his own biography, and then he says, you know, I might be a little mad, and I agree there. Um, but the reality is that these people are very, very powerful. They're very influential. They work with those that are against the nation state, against the, the values that we hold near and dear in this country. And they're pushing. They're pushing not only in this country. They're pushing abroad. You know, you know Soros was behind the 2015 tsunami of migrations and the Prime Minister of Poland called him out, and he didn't deny that sort of thing. We've got a geopolitical, worldwide catastrophe on our hands. It's, it's bad here, but it's worse, I would argue, elsewhere in the world. I've lived a, a period of time in California. It is a beautiful climate and yeah. beautiful place. Beautiful. And how can people continue to live in a complete state where murderers, uh, people that do criminal activities, people that were supposed to be in prison, they're let out, they, they just have freedom. They call it sanctuary state. I don't, I don't get this. 
Even Chicago, which is a sanctuary city, this last weekend they were talking about how wonderful it is in Chicago. And the big headline in the paper this weekend was 10 murdered in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on. It's, it's like a war zone. And I'm, I'm just concerned that whole cities are being corrupted. What 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 is what's what's really going on? I mean, you talk about you talked about the deeper state, and I'm telling you, I don't get it. We used to have people that, like President Eisenhower, and people that come up and say, "We're not going to do this," you know, in a kind and a gentle way. But they had authority. There's no authority in America. What's go What really is going on in this deep, deep, deep? Well, a triple layer, I guess, state now. Well, certainly, Pastor, you know, the whole third layer, as I described earlier, is very, very active. And it may be that we are on the very precipice of the end times. We're, we may be right in the middle of it. Hard to tell exactly. Yeah. But it, it certainly is beginning to look like the time of Noah right before it's the sure. flood. Um, what's happening in Chicago, what's happening in Baltimore, not far from where I live in Washington, what's happening elsewhere in the country, we have people in positions of authority that are turning blind eye to what is a clear responsibility to take the law to law violators. Just up here in St. Louis, you know, the mayor, you know, it, to her you know, credit said, we're not going to allow these lawbreakers to continue to destroy our city. But yet we have an element in our country that's willing to do that. We have an element in our world that has lost track as to accountability and responsibility for their own uh, people and for their own nation and cities. They've just, and, and you know, I talk about in, in the deeper state, these globalists want to destroy our borders. They want to destroy especially Christians. They hate Christians. Mm -hmm. They really do. They're humanist. They want to promote a lifestyle that is totally anti-Christ. And that's what they're doing. And frankly, in some places, they're doing very well. Yes, they are. Yes, Carl. Pastor, th and, and thank you, uh, Colonel McGinnis, because I think you're dead on. Here's the thing, Pastor, that came to me as Colonel McGinnis was speaking. And I talk a lot about all three of these books talk a lot about this. Here's the bottom line, Pastor Jim. For the Antichrist kingdom to fulfill itself because the Word of God tells us there will be a generation that for a period of years will see this happen. Yeah. I, I am not saying it's our generation or even the next generation. I'm saying there will be a generation. We're watching it all move that way. But for the Antichrist kingdom, this is, this is profound. This will answer a lot of questions people are asking. For it to come to fruition... America as we know it has to go away. It has to because we are the Wait a largest. True. Wait a minute. That's true. Say it again. I said. I mean, I want for the, for the uh, this, word. This is very. If you if if you really believe this, oh, I, I, that's I, shocking. With all my heart, I believe it that's because true. the word of God makes this clear. The word America is not there, but listen to this. The principles, the prophecies of what I'm saying, they're right here. Mm -hmm. There will come a generation that will see the rise of the Antichrist. That will be a globalist, one world order, kind, whatever you want to call it. There will be a global marking system. There will be a global demand of worship of a person and the beast, the system that encompasses, that, that, that rises up that person. It will. The Word of God says it will happen. Jesus talked about it. Paul talked about it. Peter talked about it. John saw it at the Revelation throne. So in order for that to happen, who is America? We are the largest Christian nation on the planet since the time of Jesus Christ the world has ever seen. All of the evil amongst us, we're still the best thing going in a fallen world. We're right. the only nation that has to build walls to keep millions of people from flooding in. But the wall is the problem. Because as long as there is rule of law, a constitutional republic, the, the, the most powerful military on the face of the earth, the most powerful economy on the face of the earth, et cetera, et cetera, if all of that is undergirded by a Judeo-Christian understanding, the Antichrist system cannot have the world. This has to go away. 
Wow. So this and is so, a spiritual so warfare. Is, that's, that's the point. It's a spirit, and it's the spirit that's, of Antichrist that's trying yes. to take over, and, that's and where, it's got a lot of converts. That's where the title of my book came from, The, the Gods, God. little g, you know, the gods. I'm not saying there's a pantheon of equal gods to Yahweh. I'm, talk, I'm using the term Elohim. The, the, the fallen realm, the demonic, the gods behind the thrones. Look at the thrones in America. Yeah. We keep asking, what's going on in California? What's going on in Chicago? What's going on in D.C.? What's happening in these governmental institutions? What's happening in the educational institutions? What's happening in Hollywood? What's happening in the media? The gods are behind the thrones, and they're working together to bring down what we know as America. It has to happen for the Antichrist. Right? Colonel, the Am rule right? of law. He just mentioned the rule of law. What part does this play in the overall uh, of, of solving and healing or, or doing that? The, you know, when these, they're rioting in, in St. Louis, they made a, a judge rule. This, this was a judge ruling, and he ruled in a ruling that many people didn't like. And I'm not going to, I, I see pros and cons and, you know, you think, well, he could have done this or he should have done that or they, you know. You know, I just heard this morning on the news with the whole St. Louis thing. The thing is, they're destroying and, and breaking the building uh, windows and all that of ma and pop type right. stores. Right. And, and that's what is so sad. Because, it's whatever they want to steal, you, yeah. I and think. It's so sad because these are the people who have worked hard their whole lives possibly to build their their own their own thing. Yes, Ricky. Well, I just want to say thank you to our governor, Governor Eric Greitens, because he yes. is enforcing the law here in Missouri. Yes, he He's is. He's doing the right thing, unlike our last previous government. So I just want to go ahead and thank and, him so much for doing that. And I'm going to say something about the governor. Can I say something about the governor, you think? Because the governor, I have proof. The governor has called in as many pastors and ministers as he could get in before this blew up. He knew it was coming. He knew it was coming down. Couple he did everything. Before. He called in the National Guard quietly yeah. to try to stop it. So there's one man trying to stop it. I understand that. So I don't want to knock my, our governor. But I, I, I just want people to understand we have to have rule of law, don't we? Well, chaos reigns. And, you know, whether it's, you know, as Carl was indicating, uh, we have a growing sense that things are out of control more chaos all the time, whether it's the threat from North Korea or it's the re-emergence of a very dangerous bear in Russia. Uh, we have an Iran that we just can't control. We have ISIS that may have been stomped out in Mosul and we're going after them in Raqqa, but they're popping up in the Philippines. We have disasters. We have these sorts of things. And I, and I think that uh, certainly in the geopolitical part of the world, you know, you can you, you put that in with the hurricanes, with the, you know, the earthquakes and all these other tragedies. Uh, the, the world seems to be crying, and it's crying out loud for, for, for direction, and it needs the love of Christ. But yet, you know, too often, even our pastors aren't engaged in their communities declaring the truth of That's God right. to right. them. And yet they need that. Yes. Yeah. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. The last few weeks, there's been storms, it seems like, every day. Something's happening somewhere. And uh, I found out that people had our generator yes. in this box. Can you look at this box right here? What is this, Lori? It's my own personal truck. That